Okay, so here's the good stuff. If you've been following the videos so far, you know our three phases of athletic development for bodybuilding. Number one, establish technical proficiency in the movement patterns. Number two, establish a strength base that provides the absolute level of loading required to grow for your body. Step three, which is in my opinion the fun part, that's developing the ability to grind. The ability to hold that technical proficiency while training to muscular failure. And just like the other two steps, it's repetition and consistency. It's all it comes down to. But there are a little tricks, a few little tricks that you can use to make it easier. So if you've been following me on Instagram, you know that I'm a pretty big fan of the Renaissance Periodization Model of Hypertrophy. And if you follow that, you know it's a pretty high volume paradigm, right? You're typically doing, you know, over the course of a given week, 16 to 24 sets per body part, which if you add up all your body parts, that's a lot of body parts. So you're doing a lot of volume. And if you look at a lot of the high level bodybuilders, they're not doing that, right? They're usually doing you know, one or two sets to failure on fewer movements. And that can be confusing for a lot of people. But it ex it's explained if you understand that top level bodybuilders have developed the ability to grind so well that they can get just as much stimulus out of those one or two sets as somebody like you or me can get out of three or four or 15 sets. Your goal over time is to move towards that lower volume that provides the same amount of stimulus because you'll be able to train more frequently, you'll beat your body less, you'll have more longevity. There's a lot of benefits to being able to grow from a lower amount of volume but it requires establishing that skill, that ability to grind. Well, here's how you do it. When you're starting out, I really suggest that you follow the Renaissance Periodization Guidelines for how much volume you should use. I think they're laid out, maybe not simply, but at least clearly, and I think they're a good starting point for most people. In the materials below, you'll find a program that I've designed that loosely follows them. I've made a few changes based on my personal preference. If you wanna follow the RP templates, I firmly support that as well. But they're high volume templates, as is the program that you'll find. You're performing multiple sets for each movement. And the reason for that is as you perform those sets, you'll notice little things about your body. You don't have to take these to failure. You'll find, you know, I, I suggest leaving one or two or three or four reps in the tank, and that's totally fine. As long as your technique's breaking down, not breaking down. Remember, you never lose that technical proficiency. If you do, the set's over. Developing the ability to grind means you can go to muscular failure without having any form breakdown. So you do this, you do it over and over and over. Let's say you're doing, we'll, we'll use hammer curls again as an example. And you're going to do, let's say, four sets of hammer curls as close to technical failure as possible. And on the first set, you know, you, you, you're still kind of maybe getting warmed up a little bit and you push pretty hard. Uh, and you're, you're more focused on the effort than anything else. And you want to get a number of perfect reps. On the second set, you're, you're a little bit more warmed up and you notice a little bit more about, okay, well, if I position my wrist, you know, a little bit bent, I feel it more in my forearm. And if my wrist is really neutral, then I feel it a little bit more in the, in the upper arm. And that you, you notice more and more of these things as you go from set to set to set. And as you repeat that from week to week to week, you'll, you'll remember, you'll get better at those things. And eventually you won't even have to think about, oh yeah, I gotta keep my wrist neutral on the hammer curls. Eventually it'll just kind of be second nature. And eventually you'll be able to do that when you're working really, really hard. You're not gonna to default to the point where you're bending your wrist back to get that little bit, little cheat, little bit. You're not gonna be moving your elbow forward. It's just gonna be so natural for you that you're gonna be able to do that very easily. This takes a long time. And it also takes a long time to adjust to that amount of volume. If you start out doing 24 sets per body part, you're gonna be wiped out. You're not gonna get out of bed. You're definitely not gonna grow or recover. So you start out with a fewer number of sets and you build up. And as you build up, you're developing these skills, learning to keep good technique, learning what good technique feels like. That's what it comes down to is the kinesthetic feeling. You're not trying to think through in your head. You're not trying to verbalize, keep my wrist straight. You just know how that feels. This is very subjective, right? And as I'm explaining this to you, you're probably thinking like, well, shit, I just need this all written out. I have a bunch of cues for my hammer curls, then I'll be able to do it. It doesn't work like that. Even if you have every little nuance of a movement written down, those nuances are gonna be different from individual to individual. 
And it's not like you can just read a textbook and all of a sudden become a great NFL player. Even though in that sport it's so well developed, everything probably is written down. You have to practice. There's no way around it. As you practice, as you get better at taking these sets closer and closer and closer to failure without your technique breaking down, you're going to find that you're growing more and more and more up to a certain point. At a certain point, you're going to stop growing so much. And that's the point where you've probably established this ability to grind. And I'll give you an example from my own training. When I was prepping for uh, nationals in 2020, I started out doing more or less my typical powerlifting program where I was training on a four-day split. Um, it was push, pull, legs, push. And, or you could think of it as, the way I thought of it, was bench, squat, deadlift, bench. And I gradually increased the frequency in this way. I, I wasn't thinking along these lines. This is something I developed as I, as I started training. But as I started training more, I realized I started to make more progress. I was staying leaner. I was adding muscle. I was adding weight to all my lifts. It was really great. And I kept going and going and going to the point where uh, there was one point in the prep. Uh, this wasn't the very final stages of the prep, but it, it was you know kind of in the middle where things started getting hard. I was training six times a week. And twice, uh, on three of those six days, I was training twice a day, All right? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine training sessions a week, plus my cardio, right? And then plus all the other posing practice and all the other crap you have to do on training. And I thought, hey, it's been working so far. This is what I need to grow. But after that prep, I pulled back. And even though I hadn't changed my drugs, I hadn't changed my food, right, relative to the previous off-season, I was growing more and less. It was because I developed that ability to grind on the bodybuilding style training so well that I couldn't recover from the amount of volume that I was doing, even though I had progressed up to that amount of volume in a pretty, pretty, good, pretty good way. So you'll probably find the same thing as well. As you add volume, you're going to have to slow, as you add volume, you're going to get better and better and better at pushing yourself closer and closer to failure. Eventually, eventually, you're going to get so good at pushing closer and closer and closer to failure, you're going to have to then cut back on the volume. You can almost think, of that, think about it as periodizing volume and effort rather than volume and intensity. I don't want to say that's how you should think about it because there's not a whole lot of research around that, but it's a good way to kind of grasp the concept in your mind if you're struggling with it. So check out the training template below. You'll see how it progresses in volume from month to month. Give it a shot, see how you like it, and let me know.